So I played the AC story crossover for Valhalla and Looks like there are some things to talk about. Thanks to Yubi for letting me check it out early. I'm not the biggest fan of the free content for Valhalla, which so far has been the festivals, the river raids, and a few other things. So when I saw they were doing this crossover event, I was like, okay, let's check it out. This is different. We can give it a shot. But I'm sorry to say, I don't think this is any better. It's... It's Malaka. 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 Without spoiling anything, Eivor goes to a new island to help some people that are in trouble, like he has in every DLC, and he bumps into Cassandra. Cassandra. They go on a mini adventure. There's some fighting, some looting, some puzzle solving, some cutscenes. It lasts maybe an hour and a half, probably less if you're quick and then it's over. And Cassandra, she's in it for maybe half the time. If you liked Odyssey and Cassandra, that character, I could see this being a really cool moment. Like, whoa, Eivor meets Cassandra, that's cool. But unfortunately, nothing really happens. And when I say nothing happens, I mean nothing that actually matters at all in this event. There's no connection to modern day, no plot movement for Bassam or Layla. Nothing that I think people who like this game and were looking forward to this were actually wondering about. It is essentially a new part of the map that looks like the rest of England with a mini arc featuring a character that you recognize. There's no big revelation with Cassandra. She shows up and helps Eivor. She says that she's lived a very long time and traveled the world. This is stuff we know but nothing concrete happens in this content that furthers her story or Eivor's. I guess it's like a little checkup on her, like, hey, she actually met Eivor because we know she's lived for like forever. That's something she did from the time we played as her in Odyssey to when she meets Layla in modern day. But I guess that's just not very interesting to me. I think the best way to describe this event is to say, Cassandra appears in Valhalla. She exists in the course of this quest. Aside from the knowledge she brings, which is something I feel like Eivor could have figured out himself, that's it. That's really all I can say about it. And for a character that I genuinely enjoy in Odyssey, I mean, I booted Odyssey up after finishing this just to like compare. I'm sorry, but this sucks. I mean, this could have and should have, frankly, been way more than it is. Now, since I'm doing this early, I haven't played the Odyssey crossover mission yet, so maybe that one makes this feel more complete, but I finished this thing and, you know, it was one of those moments where I was like, is this really it? To me, that's a clear sign that this update, it relies on you enjoying Valhalla's gameplay loop for what it is. Like, if you like Valhalla as a game, I think, you know, it's going to be more of that and that's going to be great for you. But I, you guys know, I just don't. I, I didn't want more of Valhalla. I wanted something slightly new or slightly different. And, you know, this is more Valhalla. It doesn't help that Cass and Eivor, they spend a lot of time bickering. I can't trust you, Cassandra. You have no idea what you'd be dealing with. You need my help. For most of the quests, they actually don't like each other. I think the writers were trying to make it feel like a sibling rivalry, like a, you know, like a Jacob and Evie Fry thing, two evenly matched warriors sort of competing with each other. But to me, it just, it wasn't charming. The one thing they do have in common is they don't trust the hidden ones. I'm not a hidden one, but I have friends that are. And often my goals align with theirs. I assume the same is true for you. While I appreciate their gifts, I'm not sure I trust fighters so cloaked in secrecy. I prefer more direct methods of battle. <laughs> Clearly. We know better than to believe Eivor will become a hidden one at some point, especially if you paid attention to what he or she says at the very end of the game. But if there's any further proof that that won't happen, I mean, man, this is it. And then there's the puzzles. Figuring out how to open a hut, you know, this whole thing that you did for a billion hours in the main game, that's not fun. Trying to find the right angle on these monoliths, again, like the main game, still not fun. Not knowing where to point these magical beams in this puzzle, again, 
Not fun. These just left me feeling frustrated. There's a part where there's a celebration and you do a bunch of drinking games and flighting with Cassandra. This was another one of those moments where I was like, okay, this clearly was not made for me. I just didn't find this charming. However, there was one scene right here that I appreciated because at least it's self-aware. Malaga. <laughs> Malaga. You really are drunk. Now you're just spouting nonsense. <laughs> no, no, it's a Greek swear word. It's malaka. 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 That's it. You got it. If you love Valhalla and you're like, man, you're being way too harsh because this is free. All I'm going to say is it's not technically free. Playing content in video games, it costs time and I can't say this was worth the time because I just expected something, anything to happen that actually matters. I mean, this story could have never been told. This could have never happened and it would not have made a difference. Truly, you could watch the cutscenes on YouTube, which are probably only like 20 minutes long because most of your time is spent traveling across the island. And still, I'm not sure it would be worth your time. And more than anything, this feels like a missed opportunity. Can you imagine if Eivor and Cass teamed up to do something important in the grander narrative? Something that affects Basim and Layla's story? Ah. Instead, Eivor meets Cass and they team up to, stay, to save an island that you've never seen before, never heard before, that didn't matter before. It just magically appeared for this content. They go, they save it, and then she disappears. That's it. There's no layers, no deeper meaning. They don't share any meaningful insight, despite being two of the most important figures in the history of the Hidden Ones up to this point. What's also bizarre to me is this is free content. Everyone who owns the game will get to see this. So it makes sense to give us something to chew on, right? Anything at all. And you don't get anything. I, I just don't get it. I don't know if UB plans to do more story crossovers, but after this one, I can't say that I'm looking forward to the next one if this is what we can expect. In order to promote this, Odyssey's having a free weekend. So, you know, you can go and check out the free mission in that game too. I'm planning to go back and do that, uh, mostly because I want to keep playing Odyssey on my new PC. Like it, it runs like a dream in that game. Uh, yeah, I still think it's much better than Valhalla, but more than anything, this feels like a promotional thing meant to get people to play Odyssey, which like, okay, we've seen UB do similar things. Kind of like how the Ezio outfit gets released a few months after launch for every new game. It's a clever way to get people to revisit the older games, you know, or the new ones too. We spend more time just across the Assassin's Creed franchise, and hopefully they like their time enough to buy the next game. This right here, this feels like a way to get people to play the other games. And hey, I mean, I guess that's okay. But like I said before, when you see these two characters meet, you're like, yeah, this is cool. But then nothing happens. And just, I couldn't find any anything worthwhile in this event. Uh, I mean, perhaps the one scene where they fight each other is pretty cool, but it lasts like two minutes and it's like the animation's cool, but I was also just left thinking, why am I not fighting her, you know? Why is this a cutscene? Anyways, clearly I'm still in the phase of not being able to, you know, see, like, see the good in Valhalla and I don't know if I'll ever get out of that because man, it's been a year. Uh, but yeah, that's all I've got to say about this. I didn't want to spoil specifics about it. Uh, I just wish I liked this more. I just want to give you guys a small update. Um, I don't love making videos like this with the facepalm thumbnail. I mean, that's how I feel, but I, I, I'm passionate about games and I love sharing that with you guys, but I also just hate being the super serious gamer guy who can't enjoy stuff, you know, being super critical. I do enjoy a lot of games and I, I feel like I need to reflect that more in my content. Um, so. Just a little update on the AC review series. My next video will be the AC1 review. I'm going to boot that up, play it through um, for like the second time in the last couple or in the last two years. Uh, but I want it to be more like the AC Unity review. You know, very light, very fun. Uh, it still has the analysis, but just like fun to watch and fun for me to make. I guess I'm just tired of making these long drawn out video essays. I just want to have more fun with it. So. Uh, anyways, expect that before the end of the year. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to click that like button. Also, subscribe to the channel for more content like this coming very soon. Hit that bell to turn on notifications so you don't miss it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll talk to you next time. If we 
must. <sighs> so, opponent, do you have a name? Eivor. I take it you're one of the Hidden Ones. <laughs> Not exactly. 